Hi, I'm Brandi Haflin. I'm a personalized physics instructor, and I help high school and college students feel confident and successful in learning physics. Welcome to my AP Physics uh, exam preparation video series. Over the next few weeks, I'll be releasing sample questions um, of free response um, well, sample videos of free response questions for each of the four AP Physics exams to help students familiarize themselves with what kinds of questions will be asked and how the AP Physics exam will ask them to demonstrate their knowledge. As a tutor working with students all over the country, I know that for a number of reasons, not every student has the opportunity to work with released exam materials uh, to help prepare for their exams, and this video series is primarily intended for those students. AP Central lists the following types and number of free response questions that students can expect on the ENM exam. Uh, the one we'll be focusing, focusing on today is experimental design or one with a lab-based component. And um, this is the second such that I'm showing you uh, just to help cover all of the uh, major content areas. And the questions on the whole will assess all seven of the science practices listed here. We'll be taking a look at the C, electricity and magnetism question two from 2018, which covered capacitors and dielectrics and RC circuits. An experiment is designed to measure the dielectric constant of paper that has an area of 0 0.06 square meters. Using aluminum foil, two parallel plates are created with the same area as the paper. 500 sheets of paper are placed between the aluminum foil plates to create a capacitor as shown in the figure above. Using a multimeter, the capacitance C of the capacitor is measured. The number of sheets and the total thickness D of the stack of paper are recorded. The experiment is repeated, reducing the number of sheets of paper each time. The data are recorded in the table below. So you can see here um, the data the student collected as far as number of sheets of paper, the thickness of the paper, and the measured capacitance in farads. Part A, indicate below which quantity should be graphed to yield a straight line whose slope could be used to calculate a numerical, a numerical value for the dielectric constant of the paper. So uh, it may be helpful to you to remember the equation uh, capacitance equals dielectric constant times epsilon naught times the area divided by the uh, distance between the plates. And that tells us that our vertical axis should be the capacitance C and our horizontal axis should be the inverse of distance one over D. And our scoring, um, although there was also, oops, <laughs> well, um, there was a, a note that um, students could earn full credit if the axes are reversed uh, or if they use another acceptable combination. Um, so our uh, point is going to be for indicating uh, variables that will create Uh, a straight line whose slope um, can be used to determine the dielectric constant of the paper. Again, um, you can earn full credit uh, even if you reverse the axes um, or if you have another acceptable combination. So use the remaining columns in the table above as needed to record any quantities that you indicated that are not given. <laughs> Label each column you use and include units. So hey, here's that data. 
uh, again <laughs> with, um, so one over D is what I hadn't calculated. So I've put that in here in a different color to help show um, that we've had to add it. All right, so plot the data points for the quantities indicated in part A on the graph below. Clearly scale and label all axes, including units if appropriate, and draw a straight line that best represents the data. And of course, I'm going to show the graph on the next slide. So here you can see my plot of capacitance versus the inverse of the thickness. Um, I made this in, um, oh, I am not on my, oh, there we go. I was on my slide. And now <laughs> I can't, I can't find my cursor. There we go. Okay. Let's try this again. So I made this with a plotting tool and a data analysis tool called graphical analysis. Let me slap on there um, my linear fit. And uh, here are the points. You're going to get a point for a correct, I'm not going to write correct for all of these. Um, for a scale that uses more than half the grid. So in other words, don't cram your plot in the bottom left corner. Fill the grid that they give you. Um, you're going to get a point for um, correctly labeling the axes, including units. So I'm just going to, here, uh, you're going to get a point for, again, I'm going to leave off the correctly, but for plotting the data. And uh, your final point here is going to be for drawing. Let's actually just make that look a little bit nicer. There we go. It's going to be for um, drawing. A straight line consistent with the plotted data. Part C, using the straight line, calculate a dielectric constant for the paper. Okay, so we are going to need, uh, remember that equation, slope equals kappa epsilon naught A over D. So looks like uh, the slope of our graph uh, should be equal to kappa epsilon naught times the area. So yeah, let's get the slope of the graph. And I'm going to show you the calculation that uh, they had from their uh, um, sample plot. But I, of course, you know, used a plotting software, so I didn't need to take this step myself. And we're going to have, so here were the two data points that they chose, and they got a zero point one nine times seven negative eleventh uh, farads times meters. And if you used a linear regression because again you can always um you have to draw your plot on paper but you can always use the linear regression and scatter plot tools on your graphing calculator to help you with the analysis so yeah back to that slope equals Kappa epsilon naught A, so 
kappa should be our slope divided by epsilon naught a. So I will take that value of the slope um, and 8.85 times 10 minus 12 times that 0 0.060 square meters for the area. And I got a value of 3.58 for the dielectric constant of the paper. And if you used a linear regression, um, then you would, the value of the slope from the linear regression, you'll get 3.52. So our um, scoring here, uh, correctly uh, calculating the slope from the best fit line and not from data points unless they fall in the line, right? That's been consistent across many of these questions um, that the points you use for your slope have to be actually on the line and not data points. And then um, we have a point for um, correctly relating, and again, I'm leaving off the correctly uh, relating slope to dielectric constant. And then we have um, final point for the correct answer. The student now makes a capacitor using the same aluminum foil plates and just one sheet of paper. Using the experimentally determined dielectric constant, the student calculates the capacitance to be 18 nanofarads. The student uses this uncharged capacitor to build a circuit using wire, a 36 volt battery, three identical 80 ohm resistors, and an open switch as shown in the figure above. Calculate the current in the battery immediately after the switch is closed. Well, that sounds to me like an Ohm's law business, right? So, um, let me. So, that sounds to me like we're going to need the voltage of the battery equals the current times the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Well, um, we're going to need to get the equivalent resistance of just the parallel part. Um, so the equivalent resistance of just the parallel connection will be 1 over that equivalent resistance for the parallel connection uh, equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Or as I like to write it, that equivalent resistance of a parallel connection will be equal to the inverse of the quantity 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Um, this is how I actually put it into my calculator as well. Just to make it a little bit easier. Oop, that should be a negative 1. Let's fix that. Make that clearer. And I'm going to get uh, 40 ohms for the equivalent resistance of just that parallel connection, but now the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit, we're gonna need to add in that other 80 ohms that was in series, and we're gonna get 120 volts, or sorry, 120 ohms for the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit. Excuse me. Um, so now we can come back and use um, Ohm's law to get that current in the battery. 36 volts divided by our 120 ohms gives us 0 
amperes. And so uh, the way this was scored is um, one point for calculating the equivalent resistance. Um, hang on, uh, let's try spell calculating, right? So calculate the equivalent resistance of uh, the parallel resistors. There's um, a point for substituting um, I kind of did this a little bit different order than what they presented it. Uh, There's a point for using Ohm's law with the voltage across the capacitor equal to zero, because of course, immediately after the switch is closed, the capacitor is uncharged. There's no voltage across it. Um, should have started with that actually, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and then our final point is um, going to be for substitution um, of the values for the resistance, including the value combined resistance above. Determine the time constant for this circuit, part D. So we're going to remember, um, of course, that the time constant tau for this circuit will be equal to the equivalent resistance of the circuit times the uh, capacitance. So that's going to be the 120 ohms we just found times the 18 nanofarads, and we get 2.16 microseconds. And our points here are, okay, I lost it. Uh, for using the equation, For time constant with the equivalent resistance from the last part, or we could say from above. And then um, our final point is going to be for an answer with units, correct answer with units. consistent with part D. Part F, students A and B measure the time it takes after the switch is closed to reach half its maximum value and find that it is longer than expected. Excuse me. Part one, student A assumes that the capacitance value is correct. Would student A conclude that the resistance value is larger or smaller than measured? We've got options and then explain experimentally what could account for this. So here is my pro tip on questions like this. Do the explanation first and then come back and do the selection because you can't make a good selection until you've reasoned things out. So just take the time to 
write out your reasoning, and then make your selection. So again, here's an example of the reasoning. That the battery is not ideal and has internal resistance, so the actual resistance for the circuit is larger than the measured resistance. So we'll want to check larger than measured. And our point here uh, is just for an appropriate explanation. That sounded funny to my ears. Appropriate explanation. There we go. And F part two, student B assumes that the resistance value is correct. Would student B conclude that the capacitance value is larger or smaller than measured? And explain experimentally what could account for this. Again, here's an example. Some of the sheets of paper may be thinner than expected. So the actual capacitance for this circuit is larger than the measured capacitance. And once again, our point is just going to be for an appropriate explanation. So I hope you have found uh, this presentation of a um, experimental design free response question from the uh, C E N M exam helpful. If you have a video solution you would like to request from my YouTube channel, you can send it to physicsproblemrequests at gmail.com, but I won't be putting them up until my AP series is concluded. If you need some email assistance, you can send your problem and the work you've done on it to freephysicshelpline at gmail.com with a limit of 10 questions per academic year. If you'd like to know more about my online physics tutoring services, you can email me at brandyheflinphysics at gmail.com, visit my website, virtualphysicsofficehours.com, or find me on Facebook. I'm Physics Tutor Brandy. Just a few notes. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board. The College Board does not endorse or recognize this video or my services. All of the materials presented are available on AP Central at the link shown here for the AP Physics C Electricity and Magnetism exam, and those materials include the release free response questions, the scoring guidelines, and sample student responses and commentary. I strongly encourage students to review those sample responses to get a feel for the different levels and quality of the responses prepared by the students who took these released exams live and to see what the scores for that year were looking for and how they decided to award points. If you have questions, you can reach me at brandyheflinphysics at gmail.com. I'm physics tutor Brandy. I love physics, and I love helping you. Until next time.